Hello everybody. I know in the last video I said I was going to let you figure out the next two blocks, but I decided that there might be some stuff that I didn't go over yet and I probably should show you what's up. So this video is just kind of like leading you in the right direction so you guys aren't left too high and dry and you don't get mad at me. <laughs> All right, so let me do this first. Let's just, I'm not gonna tell you the size because I want you guys to figure out the sizes, but just remember that when you make the cylinder, the cylinders double the height of the regular block and radius is what? Radius is like half of the diameter. So if the other, if the cylinder looks like the diameter is the same as the other block, then do the math and figure out the radius. Okay, so I'm not gonna change the sizes, but I'm gonna show you basically what most people do is a mistake. Um, you guys watch me do the blocks that have 90 degree angles, right? So usually I go and I select everything and then I hit bevel and you would get something like this, but this is incorrect. And let me explain why this is incorrect. It's incorrect on a cylinder. Okay. On a cylinder, what you really need to do is you got to look at this. Let me deselect it. See how there's already this hard edge right here. Okay. That means that all of these edges here going around the cylinder are basically smooth or they have kind of the same, they have an average normal angle. So the shading looks nice and smooth. Okay. So, so for this one, you don't need to re bevel these edges, these vertical edges, which you just need to bevel is the top and bottom edges. So to do that, you just double click on one edge and it'll grab the whole edge loop and then you hold control and shift and double click on the bottom edge and now you have these two you're just going to hit bevel that's obviously too much you know so you get it to where you think it looks good add a segment in there and now this is what you're looking for okay but but we're not done okay here's why when you look at this you can see that there's still this hard edge and it's like wait why is that going on that has to do with normal angles of the vertices. Uh, if you wanted to actually get into looking at that, and if you become a like more advanced modeler, you'll have to understand that stuff. Uh, you have to go to like polygon and say vertex normals. Okay, so we got all these little green lines coming off here. What do these mean? Well, these green lines are taking the verts and saying uh, each vert, like what direction are the normals pointing? And you can see right here how for some reason there's two coming off of one angle here. And the reason why is that technically there's actually four vertices that are basically stacked on top of each other uh, for each one of these verts. Uh, I know that sounds weird, but basically to make a single face, you have to have four vertices that are independent. What Maya does is it kind of hides that from you so that it's easier to work with. So you don't have to grab four vertices to work with it. You just can grab the one. They're just stacked on top of each other and they're considered to be connected unless you break them apart. Uh, to show you that if you ever right click and hold down and drag to vertex face, the vertex face basically shows you each individual face where each vertice is. And now if I roll in here, you can kind of see that this vertex normal is going in one direction. This vertex normal is going this direction. If we get out of that though and go right back to the regular vertices, they're actually sharing the same space in 3D. So that's why this has the split here. Okay, that's what we would call a hard edge. That's just basically the nomenclature that, that Maya uses. We want to get rid of that hard edge so that it's averaged and then that way we won't get that artificial looking crease there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go um, to object mode. We can just select it like that and there's a menu mesh display and all we have to do with mesh display is go down to soften edge and this will apply it to everything. Now you can see what just happened there. So it basically took the four verts that are right there and it averaged it into one. And now if I deselect it, it looks basically how we would expect a beveled edge to look. So that's what we're looking to do. And if you want to turn on, if you decided to turn on the display, just to check that out, you can just go back into polygons and say vertex normals. Just turn that off because you're not going to want to look at that all day. All right. So, okay. So let's go into the, the UVs for this. Cause I'm going to show you like a really quick way that you can do the UVs for this. Um, 
So uh, let's see here. This, these extra edges that you see in here, that's from the bevel, right? And this is not proportionate to the size that's in the 3D. So if I was to go here and turn this on, you can just turn this little checker thing on. You can see, if you don't see like a nice perfect square, that means something is stretched or something is compressed. You can see on the top and bottom, see how this looks like perfect squares? This is because this is proportionate to this as far as, uh, as far as like the amount of um, stretch goes. Uh, but this is not. So if I was to double click on this and just go ahead and scale it out this way, you can see that that is now looking more like a perfect square. Okay. Now we could be done with it at this point. It just like and go ahead and pack it in or do like a layout, grab everything and do a layout. But I just wanted to show one other thing because this is usually how I unwrap things. Uh, I grab everything and I put a planar project on. And what the planar project will do, if we turn this little doohickey on, you can see it just basically takes a plane and it projects the UVs from like one direction. Now, the problem that we have with this is that there's overlap going on. So um, there's basically these pla the, this plane, or I should say this side here, is being overlapped on this side here, okay? Within the UV space, that is, not in the 3D port viewport, of course. Um, that's not what we want for these. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit Q to drop the tool. And I'm going to go to edge, double click, hold control shift, double click. And I'm going to want to break the top and bottom off. And I'm also going to need to rip a seam down the, uh, either the front or the back of the object. So what I'm going to do is go and hold control and shift and just click down like that. Now, the reason why this is, is think about a can opener. So you have a can opener and you have a can and you can go ahead and remove the top of the can with the can opener. You can remove the bottom of the can with the can opener. But if you wanted to actually lay the can completely flat, you'd also have to cut the cylinder that's left over. You'd have to cut like down that and then you can like peel it open. That's basically what we're doing with this. So what you want to do is now that we've got all these seams selected, this is where we would want to peel, you know, peel the, the object open from. You go ahead and just hit cut. Boom. Now we've cut that and you can tell that you've cut it. If you deselect, you see these white edges. That's this tool right here is on. So that shows you your open seams and it shows up in your UV viewport as well. So the next thing to do is just grab all the faces and do an unfold. Okay. So this looks like it worked correctly. The first time I did this in Maya 2020, it gave me a weird error. And I, so I went to the unfold uh, option box, which is that you just hit that little thing there. I changed the UV or layout UV to be checked. And now it seems to be working right. Uh, but before, like it didn't lay them out proportionate to each other. Um, how would you know that they're proportionate or not? Just turn the checker back on. And all the checkers going around should look the same size. So that would tell you if they're proportionate. The reason why you want to do that is if you're doing 3D graphics, you want it for the most part. I mean, there's always exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, you want the texel resolution to be the same all over the object so that when you're moving, when you like if you're walking around an object like in a game or something, that all of a sudden the texture doesn't look like bad on one side but good on the other side. So you want to try to keep that resolution, uh, you know, uh, the same or at least you know so it's consistent so this is I don't like the orientation of this so I'm going to say orient shells and and that's going to go ahead and straighten it out and then I can grab everything and then just hit layout and it will lay it out again now just so you know if you're going to be somebody who models a lot be aware that if you're doing this part where um, you see this this these edges are actually touching right on the edges a lot of programs, if you move it to another program, they don't actually like that. So the you know, safe bet to do is just move it inside a little bit like that. Now for this project, of course, I want you to move these UVs into the texture that you use for the first unit box. So this you'll be moving around and you guys know how those tools work. A uh, little trick here, see there's, a, there's this little transform menu. You can actually rotate stuff with these little 
rotate arrows there. So just FYI, something you can, you know, more to learn. Now you see how these are nice and, you know, everything looks pretty coherent and stuff like that. That's what we're looking for. This edge right here would match up with the size of this edge right here. That means that they are proportionate. Okay, so uh, the next object, let's get into the next object. So we'll just grab this and bye bye. There goes all my work. Actually, you know what? That's not the best thing to do. I'm just going to hide it. Control H. Let's hide that. Just in case I have to go back to it. <laughs> okay, so the next object is the block. And so, again, I'm not going to do the size. I want you guys to figure out the size. You should be able to figure it out. It's either like half or double. It's some unit blocks are always done in in proportions like that. So the one thing, though, you might be going is like, well, how do I get the triangle shape? OK, there's a few creative ways that you can think about doing this. Um, one of them, let me just make a sphere. Actually, no, not a sphere, a cylinder. OK, so one way you might be able to make a cylinder would be to go to the channel box here and make the uh, let's see here that's what I'm looking for turn that to three and now you got kind of a wedge shape right but the problem with this is that you know you're trying to make the triangular shape block and it in you it's easier to start off from a block like this because that's how they actually create it and then you can get the sizes right so let me delete that. So assuming that you got this block the right size, this is how you probably want to do that. Go to verts, go to verts like that. And I'm going to go ahead and go to this toolkit right here. And I'm going to hit connect. Let's see, did it work? It did work. Great. Okay, so then I hit enter. And now we have, you can see, then you have that wedge shape. Then you can go face, you can delete those faces off so you just have that open face there's a couple ways to fill this uh, one way is just double click here go to the mesh menu and say fill hole that's one way okay or we can there's another way let me show you you could also grab this and hold control shift and grab that and you could bridge it this is the bridge tool right here that'll bridge it that's another way that's you know like I said there's there's multiple ways there's even there's a tool I haven't used in a long time a pen polygon tool. I think that's the one. You can click here and then click there and then hit enter. All right, three ways to do the same thing. It doesn't matter how you want to do it, but there's there you go. That's how you can fill that hole. As far as unwrapping this one, I'm going to leave that to you because I think you can figure this out. Uh, it's basically just like the blocks except for it's a wedge shape. So. Uh, Use your creativity, use your mind, and deconstruct how you would do it. All right, I think that's enough for this one, and thank you for watching. I will talk to you later.